last time on Hardcore Academy, we've seen my top 20 to 11 picks from E3 2015. Now, this time, we're going to see the top 10 from E3. Number 10, The Last Guardian. I remember seeing this game back at E3 in 2009, and I was pretty amazed by it then. But I nearly forgot about it and didn't think it was ever going to be made. But when it was shown at E3 2015, I was pretty hyped for it. You play as a young boy who, with the help of his giant bird dog companion, has to make his way through these ancient ruins and such. It is beautiful, the bird dog is cute, and the game has the familiar style of Team Ico, the creators of Ico and Shadow of the Classes, which are two awesome games. Number 9. Doom. I am a big fan of the Doom series, and this game is looking pretty sweet. There are some new melee moves and some new gameplay mechanics, such as climbing up onto ledges and having a jetpack that allows for some long jumps or a kind of double jump. We also got a look at the new version of Hell, and it looks to be much more vast and more detailed than any of its previous incarnations. They also show the Doom Snap Map, which would allow players to create their own levels, their own gameplay modes, and even manipulate gameplay mechanics to create fun and new ways to play the game. This looks like it will be the best installment to the series yet, and I can't wait to play it. Number 8, the Shenmue 3 Kickstarter. Wanna hear something else crazy? I've never played a Shenmue game either. <sighs> yeah, pretty crazy, I know. The game is pretty popular to a lot of people, and I was more excited for this for other YouTubers like Johnny Millennium, the Happy Console Gamer, than I was for myself, because I know how much they like this series. The first game came out on the Sega Dreamcast, I think it was. Then the next came out on the Xbox, and now the series will finally continue. I think this is the first time a Kickstarter was announced on a live show like E3, and the Kickstarter has already reached its funding goal of $2 million, I believe it was. And as of right now, they have already reached six of their stretch goals and have earned over $3.5 million in counting, and there are still 20-something days left of funding left to go. See, Ubo? Kickstarter does work if you make something that a lot of people love. Number 7, No Man's Sky. This game kind of blew my mind with how big it was. The first thing shown from this game was a battle in space in which you can join and take sides in. Then it showed the map of the solar system that the player was in, and then the camera began to zoom out, showing thousands and thousands of stars. Each star is a sun, and each sun has planets of its own planets that you can visit, but due to the sheer vastness of the universe that has been created in this game, many stars may not ever be visited. The game is just that large. Each planet is different, and there are beautiful planets and dangerous planets, and you can explore any of them. The environments are completely destructible, and you can explore the land and the life of the new planet before going to a beacon on the planet and uploading your discoveries. I don't know if the game will have a story, or if it is just exploring a universe, or if it is similar to many MMOs where there isn't much of a main story, but there are hundreds of quests you can do for different NPCs. I don't know much about the game, aside from how awesome and how huge it is, and that is enough to get my interest. Number 6, Kingdom Hearts 3. The long-awaited third installment to the Kingdom Hearts series is coming. I can't wait to return to the world of Disney and Final Fantasy and fight off the Heartless and explore new locations. I loved the first two games, and I am sure this one will be no different. Number 5, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Of course the Metal Gear Solid 5 trailer and gameplay demo had to be on the list. A lot of new information was shown in the trailer and demo, with some questions being answered and some new questions being raised. Check out my trailer analysis if you want to know more. The gameplay demo showed a lot of new information by first commenting on the microtransactions. The game has been balanced to where it is fair and fun for everyone, and you can play the complete game without even using the microtransactions at all, so it will not be a problem. The demo then went on to show different kinds of customizations, like weapons and logos. It then showed the free mode, which would allow you to roam around the world and find main operations or side operations to play through. The demo also showed some of what D-Dog could do. He could attack enemies and go around and mark enemies on your map for you. Similarly. They showed another buddy in the game, with D Walker. This thing was a kind of small Metal Gear that looked kind of similar to Metal Gear Mark II from MGS4, but it is large enough 
for Snake to climb onto it so you can ride it around. It can either walk and run, or it can switch over into another mode where it actually has wheels and can then move faster and quieter. This thing can be armed and equipped with a variety of different attachments, like guns and arms in this instance. This thing can also do something similar to Diamond Dog, and can use a kind of radar to locate nearby enemies for you. You can fault in practically anything and send it back to your base. You can listen to mission briefings on cassette tapes in a Walkman, or even collect several cassettes that contain a variety of different musics. It was revealed that there are 50 different music tracks in the MGS5 soundtrack, including several hit songs from the early 80s. I will be doing an analysis of this gameplay presentation as well. Keep an eye out for that. Number 4. Uncharted 4. The gameplay presentation for the new Uncharted 4 started with a bit of a hiccup. The game was just overflowing with awesome so much that it kind of temporarily broke. Actually, I'm pretty sure that they forgot to charge the controller and Drake just didn't move for a little while to be ending. But that just shows this was a live gameplay presentation and not just a CG trailer that was created beforehand. When the gameplay first started, Drake didn't move. But even though he didn't move, the world continued around him. Dozens of people could be seen going about their day and doing numerous different things in the crowd. Then they reset the demo, and it went off without a hitch from there. The game went on to have Drake and Sally moving through a crowd of people, and they eventually come across some bad guys. And in typical Uncharted fashion, they have to shoot their way through the town. Eventually they jump into a jeep, and from then on they have to make their way through the town, down the mountain toward a tower at the bottom. An armored vehicle then crashes through and begins chasing them through the city, trying to take them out. You have to swerve through different paths to try and lose the pursuing enemy. And this is what shows exactly how big this world is. There are dozens of different paths to take, and even roadblocks like a construction site. The game looks beautiful, and it is huge. The Uncharted series is actually one of my favorite video game series, and I can't wait to play the fourth installment to it. Number 3, Fallout 4. The return of Great Series, a first-person action game that takes place in a post-apocalyptic world. Fallout 4 is going to take place in post-apocalyptic Boston, 200 years after the bombs dropped. The game now has more upgradable weapons and an all-new deep crafting system. There are 50 base weapons and 700 different combinations to create new weapons. Every item within the world can be used for crafting something. Now everything has a use, and nothing is useless. You can also craft your own settlements by mixing and matching pre-built parts to literally build your own houses, and you can create some pretty interesting creations. Hell, you can also craft your own power armor with all kinds of different upgrades. Fallout 4 has a lot of new things, and that isn't just limited to crafting things. There is also a new partner for the hero in the form of a dog. This dog can go to places you ask him to, he can fetch items for you, and he can even attack enemies for you. Number 2. The Microsoft HoloLens The Microsoft HoloLens is an amazing and interesting piece of technology. The HoloLens is like a pair of glasses that create a hologram of sorts within the glasses to kind of project an image onto any surface. It is kind of similar to the Oculus Rift for Sony's Morpheus, except you can actually see through the glasses and an image appears to be projected onto a surface. The game that was used with this technology was Minecraft, where at first it appeared to be projected onto the wall, but it was only within the glasses. Then the game was transferred over to the surface of a tabletop, and it appeared as a huge world that was like a giant Lego set. You could even kind of lift the world up to take a look and see what is beneath the area. This was completely amazing. It is insane how far technology has come. This is not only an awesome idea for video games. But this technology could be used for a vast array of other purposes as well. This could be used to create a model and blueprints for architects. It could create graphs and presentations for the corporate world. The applications for this technology are nearly endless. And this technology is truly amazing. And number one, the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Of course, the best thing that was shown at E3 2015 was the announcement of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. People have been wanting this for years. Many people have wanted this since the PlayStation 2 was released, and that is saying something. This is the thing that shocked me the most and I was left breathless. And after watching many reaction videos on YouTube, 
I wasn't the only one that couldn't breathe or jumped around like a madman from excitement. Square Enix has teased fans with videos to show what a remake could look like time and time again. And time and time again, it was just a graphics demo or rumors. But now, it is finally becoming a reality. The original Final Fantasy VII was a super hit JRPG, and it has been credited as the game that made the Final Fantasy series popular within the United States. And for a long time, it was the greatest selling game of all time. It brought people that weren't into gaming, into gaming. That says how popular it was. And now, after all these years, we are finally going to get a remake. There's my top 10 things shown at E3 2015. This has been Doughboy from Hardcore Academy. Peace out.